Hello, my name is Stephanie Toman and I run the ESDL program. If you are watching this video, you're obviously taking one of the ESDL modules. So we have, for example, A126, A226, we have A150, 250, etc. So there's quite a lot of different modules. Each of the modules that you're taking have module tests within them. So for example, if I talked about A126, Com, it would have four different tests or four different modules. So we'd have M1, M2, M3 and M7. Each of those tests, those live tests, have a diagnostic that goes with them. And this is how you assess how you're doing and, and it will diagnose if you're ready for your test. It will show your strengths and your weaknesses. And so therefore you can use it as a way of polishing up and, and strengthening those, those areas where um, you're not so strong. So I'm going to show you how to access this diagnostic test. In other words, we could call it a mock test. It's a pre-test or a mock test so that you can get familiar with the software because it's taken online. And you can also, it also help you to make sure that you do know the syllabus as well as you think you do before you take the live test. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into um, your Aula and account and we're going to find the link in there. It'll be on all of the modules in the same type of page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through uh, how you would set that up, how you would check it works on your device and how it can work in different web browsers as well. So we're going to look at the web browser uh, first, Chrome, then we're going to look at uh, Microsoft Edge and even Internet Explorer as ways of accessing your diagnostic test. So if you make sure that you're in Aula, I've got my Aula up here ready, I'm going to use the 126 as an example. If you go onto the Journey tab and open up Module Essentials, there will be an Access Your Mock Test page within them all. So this is where you would find your link to the diagnostic and information about the diagnostic, including any troubleshooting that we're going to have a look at, and also um, some of the navigation buttons, which is an also a thing we're going to look at. So first of all, I'm going to click on the link to the website. This is the BCS website where you would take your diagnostic and we also use the same website to take your exam. Now you would have a BCS number in there. I have a, an admin because I don't have a BCS number. We'll just leave that blank. But you do not need a BCS number in order to do the check system requirements, which is this link just here. So if you click on that, what we're going to do is we're going to look at, this is in Chrome as you can see, so we're going to try Chrome first and we can look at the way that you can check it depending on what you're using. Now our tests are for Office 2016 or 2019 so they will work on those uh, versions and they will also work on Office 365. So some of the tests um, you have to do a 365 but the majority of the other tests, the 126 and the 226, you can do either and they'll all work using this method. So you're going to check things by clicking on that applet at the bottom. And you can see that it OK straight away all of these areas, but I've got no plugin detected, which I need, my platform, and a Chrome extension. So I'm going to go to the Chrome extension first and I can click on here and I can get it this way. That takes me to the page where I need to add it. So you can see there's an add Chrome. I'm going to click on there, add extension. And then you can see that it's now been added. The PSI in application extension is what I'm asking to use. So I'll go back now a couple of pages with my internet back button. And that takes us back to the beginning. You can see that it runs through. If it doesn't run through, use an F5 or refresh your page so that it does. The other things you can do, if we just come back again into this area, there's others, other areas here as well. There's an area called Download the PSI Plugin. Now this is where it comes up at the bottom of your screen here and you have to double click it to activate it. And what it does, it very quickly runs through a wizard and places it on your system. Some people worry about this. It's only short term. You can take it off again once you've finished your test and dealt with them. But it won't do any harm and it is there to make the uh, test run. Without it, they won't run. So you can finish that. Now sometimes when you have 
download the PSI plugin, you still get what we call a 3.5 net, uh, net framework problem. I'll just show you it here. So in here, what we've got is this is all on the, uh, on the website. If you go here, we've got how to install Office 365. If you're sometimes having problems with troubleshooting or you haven't got it fully installed, proper version, you can use that. We've got the online diagnostic buttons, which we will go over in a moment. And we've got a, a sort of quick document of how you would get your check your um, areas. And you can see that we've done this one. We've checked the extension. We've got the plugin. And now we've got the net.net framework 3.5. So that's the way that we can do that. So what I'm going to do is now show you that in this document here. This will all be on online and it says states here I'll just make this a little bit bigger for you that you can use Internet Explorer Microsoft Edge and Chrome okay and then you've got remote anywhere so it's about that's a bit flaky so we talk about the ways that you can get these tests to work and the best way to approach it now as I said just a minute ago if you've got problems with the .NET 3.5 then this is how you would do it so we go back to our test I'd go into my search window here, right at the bottom, and I'd type in Windows Features. Now it doesn't come off straight away, it's only because I've been in there before, but it's the Windows Features on or off. So turn Windows Features on or off, click on there. And on your laptop, you should have this indicated as being on for the Net Framework 3.5. So it needs that to be ticked and okayed in order for the test to work. Now it might take some time to install that and uh, once that's installed hopefully you can do a refresh and that will work. And that way then you can log into your test and you can make sure that everything works as I've just done. If I click on it again you can see that everything is going to, this runs across the bottom and that means it is going to work for you. Now if we open a Edge so in the edge we just type in ECDL and the UK has come up, PSI online.com. Once again, use the check system requirements. Same applet as we had at the bottom here. And then you can see that the same idea all runs through and it's running through the office. So remember you've got to have Office 2016, 2019 or Office 365 because it uses live applications when it comes in. We can also use, if we just close that one, we can also use Internet Explorer. So I'm going to type Internet Explorer in. Here's that one. It's very basic, but it still does the job. And we found that it works when some of the ones don't work on, on the PC. So I'm just going to put the ECDL UK in again. .psionline.com Go to System Check Requirements. I'm going to click on our office. It's slightly different than this one, so it has pop-up windows that you have to react to so we're going to allow the PSI plugin and that's it gone in there the net framework dot net framework is good on this one so make sure if it isn't that you go to do the search again um, and do the windows features search and you'll get the term windows features on or off and you'll be able to turn that on if it's needed also, if you sometimes on Internet Explorer, you'll get pop-ups, particularly in the university windows, if you go onto a university laptop or PC. So if you see it stalled and you've got pop-ups um, been highlighted, then you need to, it's either always allowed at the bottom of the screen or you can get them up on the bar up here, the little rectangle and a red star. So all those have been shown, the three different ways in order for you to, um, to run this test. So um, you can also look at the different documents. So what we're going to look at at the moment, we've already had a look at this one, whereby it tells you that the different uh, browsers that you can use and also the different test versions that you can use. It's got how to, to use um, troubleshooting for a .NET 3.5 problem. And if you use a Mac, there's also instructions on how to uh, boot camp assistance on a Mac. The ECDL tests do not run on a MacBook and they'll only run on, uh, run on Windows so something you need to be aware of. So if you've got problem with Windows um, 
uh, not having access to a device. Uh, lots of students have managed to borrow them um, from family and friends, or they've used the university because university ones are all Windows, lots of them to access. And um, if you're taking your test off campus, which we do facilitate as well, which I'll talk about in a moment, then um, you can um, have a laptop loan on campus if you don't have access to a Mac, if you can get onto campus. If you can't, then it is a matter of trying to access one and family and friends. So if we go on to talk about uh, the check system requirements, I've done, there's a short document here, and that just tells you it's a bit of a, a point on how to run through and just a quick picture of the, the software itself. Quick way of looking at it if you just want a mem just remind yourself really. How to install Office 365 is there from the university website, so that's when you're using. And then it's about the online test navigation buttons because they work differently for the diagnostic side compared to the live test. So we'll keep reminding you of this, of how they work. And uh, you do have to use the answer button in the tests in order to answer the question and move on to the next test. The next button is not for that. The next button is a skip feature, which we talk about particularly in the test. If you don't want to do a question, you can skip it. And we talk a lot about suspending these diagnostic tests because when you suspend them, you can be given feedback by staff, uh, your tutors, and that feedback you can go back in then um, and you can polish that up, you can relook at it, retry it, and we'll do another feedback for you because we can explain that more um, when you're taking your diagnostic test. So it's worth suspending them, do not end a test because uh, once you end it, it disappears. So this is just gives you a quick look at how the window actually looks and how it goes with those navigation buttons that we just looked at, as you can see here. Um, so this is the way that uh, the software looks and you can see that you get the live window if you're using application live applications and you get the question bar at the top and then it talks about the buttons again thing about um, SDL testing the assessment side of things is that we now have the option to do um, on campus and we what we call off campus testing so there is a way that we can do um, off-campus testing. On-campus testing is straightforward. You just practice for your test and then you come in. Um, I'm just going to show you um, on our again and um, where you can find this sort of information and what we need to do. So if you look at the assessment ECL tests and I'll take you through um, the sort of thing that you will be needed to look at when you decide what you're doing. So if you're doing online on campus testing, that's pretty straightforward. You'll be given a set test test to come to and they'll be done in the test center. You take the test, uh, logging in. We verify it by giving you a key, an invigilation key. You take the test, you get an instant result and you can leave. However, if you're doing a test off campus, in other words, they're always online, these tests, they're through BSS website. But if it's taken off campus, then there's lots of information on how you would do that. So there are um, there's slides and there's a video as well on how you can do that. And if we have a quick look at the, um, the slides, it takes you through all the things that you need to be aware of before you do a test um, off campus. There's certain requirements you need to meet. So a quiet environment, which is something we don't always have. So I have um, booked rooms for students on those occasions where you get a secure room on, on campus and you can do your testing there. You need a webcam, you need a decent band speed, you need a good uh, Chrome or uh, one of the browsers that we've used um, installed and you need to check your test system requirements in the way that we did. The other thing you need is because we're coming through uh, Teams to do these tests, we use MS Teams to do these tests, you need to download a desktop version of MS Teams. And what happens is you will get an uh, invite from what we call a training account email. And in that training account email, it will be have your module and your name in the um, subject area, so you'll know it's coming. You'll go in there, you'll use that link to come to us through teams and we will pick you up on the other end 
And then what happens is you log into your, we take you through checking your system requirements, etc. again. Um, make sure that you're aware of everything you need to be before you start your test. And you would take your test from home or from a secure room. And we would use where uh, teams would be used to watch you in the bottom right hand corner sitting there and then we would have the screen sharing your test whilst you're taking it and that's uh, being considered as okay by BCS and uh, you can take it that way so either way you will get your qualification you'll pass your tests in either way and we can help with any difficulties as you come across them however you are expected to try to do as much of this as you can because we cannot have you coming into a test centre and have nothing um, ready for um, taking your test because obviously we're doing quite a few people at a time. There are certain things you have to abide by and you'll see all of this when you come to doing your uh, off-campus testing. It's pretty much the same apart from the camera bits and all of that but it's the same ideas with, with regards to conditions to taking a test. Uh, one thing just to make you uh, make clear is that when you do come through on off campus testing through to Teams, you are not all taking this together. You ha all have a separate PC that you are on and uh, so therefore you don't see each other. Obviously there's a lot of information to take in but it's very important that the assessment area and pre-assessment with the diagnostic is understood and you can try and get your head around that as soon as you can. Um, to make sure that you don't get stressed at the time when you should be concentrating on your syllabus and your knowledge for these tests and not whether you can get the system working. We're there to help, so uh, if you need our help, we will do that with you. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave that there. I just think it's really important that you get your head around this and this is hopefully helpful in doing that. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.